Well, it's Michael Siggins again. I'm here with Bruno from Aldebaran. How are you, Bruno? Fine, very fine. With many people here, so this uh, first exhibition is going to be a success. So it's great. great. Very happy. Can you give us a little bit of a background on Aldebaran, uh, the markets that you're in and the types of products that you're selling? Uh, Aldebaran is a company that I founded five years ago, to mid of 2005. Mm -hmm. Uh, and our goal is to, is to design robots in order to help people. So it looks like uh, pretentious uh, or arrogant to say that, but we already have some applications of our robots helping autistic children, uh, or, uh, kids at hospitals, uh, old people. So we already have some applications. So it's the goal we are targeting. And we, are, we designed the robot that is a platform for all the research labs, large companies, or, or even uh, uh, programmers uh, who want to explore this new world of robotics to go explore and design applications. So we already sold something like 1,300 robots all around the world. We are very proud that uh, a Japanese or Tokyo University decided to buy our robots uh, after having compared with other robots, so this right. seeing that it's more sophisticated, more open one. So, so, so uh, that's it. We are a French company. Uh, 115 people and now we have a subsidiary in Boston and we are there to, to, to be present and to grow in the United States uh, plus we have another subsidiary in Shanghai for the same reason in uh, Asia. Okay, and now are all of your products humanoid? Uh, yeah, all our products are humanoid. We have for now Nao plus a range of Naos. We are working at Romeo. Romeo is a code name, it's a larger size one because now it's absolutely great to explore what you can do with robotics. But it's too small for many applications and we knew that. So uh, using Nao, architecture of Nao, programming uh, possibilities and tools for Nao, you can develop applications that will be implementable, upgradable on Romeo, the larger size one, so it will be uh, useful. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are now uh, developing this Romeo, <coughs> plus I decided last week to launch another project to have some kind of uh, four-leg robot based on our technologies, because I've seen what happened in Japan, I've seen that Japanese people called for robots to help them, and I'm very, very frustrated that we are here to help people with robots and we are not able to answer, because our robots have not been uh, designed to, to be able to, to work in these uh, difficult conditions. Mm -hmm. So we decided to robustify one, to have a four-leg one, and to go for robots that will be able to really help people in one year time. So this is our goal. So all humanoids, uh, but with this one with four legs. Now, uh, so a four-legged robot, maybe it could go into a disaster zone. Absolutely. And maybe even into sort of a dangerous, like with the nuclear reactor, potentially go in there and to uh, report back or to take readings and maybe even help an injured worker, things like that? Yeah, the idea is to go for that. Uh, the question of nuclear is not the question of uh, uh, stabilization. Uh, it's a question of radiations. Mm -hmm. So having a four-legged robot will have uh, power enough to be able to carry protections. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons of this four-legged shape. shape. Okay. Yeah. And when you look ahead for the future of the robotics in the marketplaces that Aldebaran is in, what do you see five years out? You see more adoption, uh, more usage of the humanoid robots and the four-legged robots. When you look ahead, what do you see? No, I'm seeing much, much more uh, usage and adoption of uh, humanoid robots mm -hmm. uh, and uh, larger size robots uh, than now. Uh, you, you know, th th that's crazy. We have many, many robots here in this exhibition. And when people are, are meeting these robots, something is happening. They are speaking with, they are interacting with the robot. But the, the interaction is totally different when it's a humanoid shape robot. Mm -hmm. Immediately there is a, a, a qualitative difference. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see that people are interested in having robot companions, uh, personal assistants, but with which they want to be able to interact. Well, they want to see the robot and say, oh, it's cute, I want it. Yes. And I don't want to have this uh, metallic box uh, because I don't want to interact with it. Mm -hmm. So here we have the question. If you're, the robot is designed in order to interact with people and to cast positive effects to people, with these shapes, we're addressing this need correctly. Great. Well, Bruno, thank you very much for your time today. Many thanks. Uh, there are many people here, but I'm very happy to have you. Okay. You know, robotic trends, as I told you, is, uh, is something I was uh, following carefully for a long time. I think you did a terrific job. So that's great in order to help uh, exhibiting, exposing what robotics can bring to humankind. Okay. So great. That's what we're trying to do. Thank you very much for your support. Many thanks. Bye-bye.